We've already tested the G-Pro gaming mouse, but does the keyboard deliver in a similar manner? Stick around, find out. The G-Pro is Logitech's first keyboard made especially for eSports professionals, so for players who earn a living playing video games. And for that it has to be portable, well-built and of course high-performing. They've addressed these three features with the tankyless layout for the first, a heavy backplate inside of the plastic mold of the G-Pro keyboard that makes it pretty stiff and although a bit heavy it makes us feel good about our purchase. And the high performance aspect is addressed with the Romer G switches. The latter are exclusive to Logitech and are purpose built for pro grade performance, responsiveness and durability if you read into Logitech's PR literally. It does however have a short actuation distance of 1.5mm that is a bit less than 2mm on Cherry MX standard switches. It also has a relatively light actuation force of 45 grams, while the rated lifetime is 70 million presses, that is 40% more than the 50 million key presses on the Cherry MX switches. But in the end, if you buy a mechanical keyboard, you will get used to the keys inside, be it Romer G's, be it Cherry MX, be it Alps, or whatnot. Yes, we did notice it they perform differently to Cherry MX switches, they feel smoother and more linear, while the Cherry MX's on their MX Browns and Blues don't give us that feeling. But although they state high performance, the unique selling proposition of the Romer G switches is the lighting that is positioned in the center of each and every keycap, guaranteeing less light bleed and more even colors. One thing we have to complain about is the quality control, and not of the Romer G keys inside, but of the keycaps themselves, as on our review unit, that was a normal retail unit by the way, the left control key kept popping off and just, and the keycap just wouldn't settle on the key itself. Aside from that one key, all others were completely normal, up to par with our other experiences with past Logitech products. While we're on the topic of buttons, two membrane keys are added onto the top right that enable or disable the lighting and the windows functionality that are very useful for gamers who want to be stealthy, who really don't want to drop out of the game to the desktop in the critical situations that esports inherently are. Additionally, I would like to complain about the positioning of these two buttons. Due to their location in the top right of the keyboard, they create this unusually large top bezel on the Logitech G Pro keyboard. And maybe it would be more sensible to add them to the vertical sides of the unit, maybe to the left or the top ones so that so you save even more space than just the tank healer's design. Well, maybe next time. Moving onwards from the things that bug us to the things that we most like about the Logitech G Pro. Starting with the rubber pads on the bottom side of the unit. They are really large when compared to competing products and we've always been kind of perplexed as to why the manufacturers don't put larger pads on the bottom as they improve the user experience so much when the keyboard doesn't wobble around or move around when intense gaming. And in the end, it just costs so little to put the to make the pads a bit bigger. It is safe to say that the Logitech G Pro delivers in this regard fully. Even the riser that includes two heights to adjust to have above average rubber surface areas. Another thing we like is the finishing. It really fits into the whole Logitech G ecosystem with the mate and glossy black accents that make the product feel premium but not industrial like although given the price of 139 euros that is suggested we would have expected it to feel a little bit more metalish or for Logitech to include more metal parts in the outer shell or something of the like so that you feel that the price is justified as now it is a really expensive keyboard especially with competing products having 30 to 40 euros lower prices with the same feature set it just does not compute yes we like the form factor the RGB colors with their nice even spread due to the Romer G switches and of course we like the sturdy build quality we just don't feel that it has that value proposition for the potential buyer that other products on the market have, so we would suggest you look elsewhere except if you really are a hardcore TSM or Cloud9 fan or really wish to complete your G Pro gaming setup with the, I think, upcoming G Pro headset. Thanks for watching this review on Discharge Networks. Don't forget to comment and subscribe to see more videos like this in the future.